We are live. We've got two very special guests today. Travis, we've uh, met our match. I, we've got another set of twins in the <laughs> building today. Yes. Sklar Brothers, I've been working on that for like a week. That was good. Good. Yeah. good. good looking at you guys. So. Hey. You guys are way better looking than us. You're in better shape than us. <laughs> <laughs> you're in St. Louis shape. You're in St. Louis shape. You're in St. Louis shape. St. Louis shape. You're in St. Louis thin right <laughs> now. I am. St. Louis fighting shape. Uh, like yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in could handle myself at a St. Louis bar shape. That's right. Right? Yes. Yeah, like I could shove a guy You're against Against okay. a drunk woman in a white cowboy hat. That's what I said. I would, I would add that to that. To a drunk woman in a cowboy hat, you will say, you want to take this outside? <laughs> you want to take this shit outside? Mom, I don't want to hear it out of you. Uh, get her, uh, get her. We are live radio.com is where you find all of our information before we get into it. So we're filming some of this today. So thanks to Gaslight. Thanks to Mad Dog. I'm so stupid with this. Yeah. Ma Ma Media Outlaws. Yeah, Mad Dog. I'm, yeah, a, I'm an yeah, idiot. Media Outlaws. Uh, <laughs> go see the Sklar Brothers at uh, Helium all weekend long. You guys were saying you want to cultivate more of a community of people who love comedy. Yeah. And who better to do that than two guys from here that have been killing uh, it in man, L.A. for a while, man. We love St. Louis. Thank we have you a for that. Thank you for that. We have a deep love of St. Louis. My man here yep. wearing the Parkway North. This is where the we went kiss to high ass, school. And, right? And the, the Vikings. He's kissing you know, ass. And when we went to Parkway North in the 90s, our school colors were acid wash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Acid wash. know that. And jean jacket. Um, there was a smoking lounge. I don't yes. think that existed. A at smoking all. lounge not for, for the, students. Not for the faculty. They're like, you go out there and smoke out there. You, as a student, go out there and smoke. Which, and they're like a couple of girls where I'm like, I don't think you should be smoking because I know both of you are pregnant. Like, yeah. <laughs> Parkway North. You guys North. are as popular as Steve Savard still. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, awesome. we should be more popular than Steve Savard. <laughs> I would we hope should so. should be the Max Scherzer of St. Louis. <laughs> That's right. We were inducted into the Parkway Hall of Fame yeah. with Max Scherzer. That, that was like a highlight of that, our lives. Because we, we come with the high heat. We don't care. So we're in... So, we're doing these shows at Helium, which we love. And Absolutely, we love the club, and we. Help. It is fantastic for St. Louis that you have a Helium. Oh, the names that club. come through. I mean, we were saying, we were this, saying month this month alone: T.J. Miller, Ron Funches, us, and Chris Titus. I mean, that is I'm that's sorry. a great like month of if comedy. You're, if you're at the Comedy Store, or the Improv in L.A., I mean, that's what that's you get. Who you see. Those are your headliners. That's who you see, and the, you know, Helium's trying to put that type of comedy here in St. Louis. We just want to make sure that there's like a community of fans that will come rise up and meet the comics there and just create a space. I mean, we had work. a really nice audience last night on a Wednesday night show. We typically come in on a Thursday. Right. So yeah. to come in on Wednesday, it's good because we're doing this project for audible.com, basically an audio book where, and Ten comics, cities. you guys will get this because comics do this. Whenever we go into a town that's a new town for us, or even a town like our hometown, we try and write material about the town, what we're experiencing in that moment. And most comics will do like one or two jokes at the top just sure. to sort of ease into their set. Where we're do like, the poor people live here? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ah, thank you. <laughs> we're like where do we where do we eat where, where yeah. do the poor people live what are the, what are they wrestling with what, like we went out to buffalo okay this is one of the first shows we ever did and we had never been to buffalo and uh i didn't know this rick james buried in buffalo do no you know way. that he's buried not, in Buffalo? We're like, how is that yeah. not on the Thank airport you. side? Right? <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Buffalo. Rick James is buried here, bitch. <laughs> Boom, right? So we so we went out to went out to his grave. grave. Now we're recording all this audio-wise because we're making an audio documentary. So we went out to his grave and we're there at Rick James' grave. Okay. We're recording audio as we're looking down at his grave, and there are like weird, like New Orleans bead necklaces and, and like an empty, empty beer, beer bottle. bottles, and we're kind of like like, what was artfully placed here versus what just blew in from the highway? Now, that could have been the way Rick when James... Did the, when did the Bills play last, too, right? right? Yeah, yeah, that could be part right. of it, right? When did the snow melt, and this was just what was left here? <laughs> this is Buffalo. I mean, you could see the two graves of the women that he was keeping hostage behind <laughs> right, him right, in right, death right. by making them smoke crack, and they died. But, I mean, like, so there's trash blowing on into other people's grave areas. I'm from like, Rick, Rick James, James in death, like he was in life, just ruining his neighbor's life. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it was one of those moments where we were like, wait, there's something fascinating here because we have a chance to do an audio documentary about what it is to be a traveling comedian. Yep. Uh, what it is to be in this city right now, St. Louis, 2017, in this moment, or whatever the other nine cities that we did, and then how does material come to be? How hmm. do you like? What is the genesis of an idea? How do you, in the moment, take an observation? Okay, we're driving down what was Olive. It's now Olive Boulevard, but when we were kids, it's Olive Street Road, right, the right. dumbest 
name. Street Road. Like, like <laughs> were they <laughs> worried <laughs> that you wouldn't know what it was? They're not it's playing it off street. street. That was, is, yeah, it was is real. Is it a boy band? What is yeah. Olive Street? Yeah. Is it a restaurant? <laughs> is uh-huh. Olive Street a relief pitcher is who's it coming from Olive the A's? Garden? <laughs> what? No, we got to put a road on oh, it. Oh, it's Olive Street Road. There are cars. Oh, that's where cars go. What kind of a road is it? I don't know. Olive Street Road is like the Olive Garden of roads. It was a fast, casual concept. When you're there, you're frustrated. There's no two lights sync up. All right. So, you know, it's our job to find these moments and find these things, these little things that we've noticed since we've been here. So that's what we do. So we've done 10. This is our last city, our homecoming. Oh Plane lands on Wednesday or Thursday. Can we write 10 minutes of comedy? 10. 10 minutes that's of comedy a lot. by that's city a by lot. Saturday. So, so we've been sort of, you've heard a little bit of it, but we've been sort of formulating what we can and just from our, from our path. This is a different city. Like we went to Tulsa. We didn't know anything about Tulsa. We're right. there for the Blue Whale Comedy Festival, which was awesome, for two days. We had two days to write 10 minutes. And we're like, oh my God, let's experience as much as we can. Let's go to Oral Roberts University. We were there for 30 minutes. We both got honorary degrees. We did. Good for you. I got a degree in racism. <laughs> I got mine in homophobia. <laughs> that's uh, Right. Good you know, they're just they're both minored in pedophilia, guys. It's okay. Oral There's Roberts. a guy with my la- with my f- Chris Denman. Yeah. that was a janitor at some church that like brutally either murdered or like <laughs> no. raped like 20 oh, people. Oh. Like no. so, it, it used to no. just be like some offensive lineman that yeah. was in the NFL. No, no. now, now I now sure. got to deal with this guy. Yeah, like, yeah. Thanks, Go- Oklahoma. Google him and you get me. Right. Google <laughs> me and you get him. <laughs> this rapist was like That's... doing stuff with the Sklar brother. Well, like, what is the deal? They now the stink is on us. Yeah, they both killed. Uh, so, the, but the idea that like, okay, you got to co- create this material. It's a great documentary. It documents basically a year in the life of us as stand up. So we went to 10 places. Each city is a chapter. It's right. like 35 to 55 minutes each chapter. And then we're going to pull six minutes of stand up, the most universal six minutes of stand up from each city and create an hour long new comedy album called Sklars and Stripes. So that's coming out in the probably the first quarter of the new year. But it ends up making it like an interesting thing for local people to come see because our buddy Scott Rogowski, which is insane, Scott Rogowski, who's the host of HQ Trivia. I don't mm-hmm. know if you play HQ Trivia. But oh, it's, every day. It's a great app. It's really <laughs> actually fun, and, yeah. and it's a trivia game. He has blown up from that, but he's been our producer for this past year, and he comes to the shows, interviews the audience members after afterwards the show, to see like, if we got we it get right. It right. Oh, wow. How important is that, too, to have somebody like that you can trust? You know this. Just radio anything. Totally. To have somebody, uh, offensive coordinator out there. Like, or it someone happen. like you guys know, and we do it a lot with each other. We bounce stuff off each, each other. If you're like, is this funny? And you are going to give him the honest response. Right. And so now he knows, or he, you're the good sounding Or board. we say something that we are observing in the moment, and he laughs. We're like... There it Boom. is. Going yeah, in. he's, going he's in. A, a true test. Totally, like, you, you, totally you can trust test. the results. And we trust him. So so he's been with us through this whole run. And I mean, look, it could be like a tree falling in a forest that nobody Shh. hears. That's your worry. Of, but we have put so much work into this. I think it is going to be culturally a really interesting thing. So how did you guys ultimately develop your foundation for that? I would imagine, though, for you to get to this point, you've had to have some set of rules that maybe you two go by in order for you to get to that point of finding those observations that you're looking for. What... How did you guys set that foundation? Well, uh, actually, we started this as it was on uh, Earwolf's Howl, which was a premium thing Uh on the Earwolf Network. Uh, and we did like four or five of them. And then we got an opportunity to do it as a pilot for the Travel Channel. Oh, nice. Which was great. We shot the, it in shot it in Raleigh, North Carolina, which was cool. However, the Travel Channel was very up the middle. And they didn't want to do the show that we wanted to do. Mm. And they wanted to do, like, I, we got notes from the people at the Travel Channel. And you're like, and I, <clears throat> their <throat> notes. We got like, this. Look, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You are going to get notes. When right. you do any sort of a TV show, someone on the other end who is paying for it has to justify his or her job, and you are going to get notes. Some and of sometimes are, they're good. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they help make the show better. That's when you get a good executive. Sometimes they're not good, and then other times they are these notes, which I read through the notes, and I was like, <laughs> not only do these notes not make sense in a TV sense, not only do they not understand comedy, I don't think you guys understand life. <laughs> there was a moment where we went to this place called Clyde Cooper's Barbecue. Yeah. Like 1908 was the best barbecue. North Carolina doesn't throw like no sort of ketchup, no sweet stuff so in it's it. A, it's more a, vinegar based. It was really good. We were, um, my mouth is watering thinking about it. Yeah. It was some of the best barbecue ever. The whole time we're walking in, they're shooting us TV show. 
so excited to get this barbecue. This, uh, everybody's barbecue. talking about it. It's like the old haunt. This is the place to go in the, the play, you know, the building's beautiful. It's really interesting. And we're like, we cannot wait. I, my mouth is watering. I cannot wait to stay to this barbecue. The woman who owns it comes over to us. She's like, hi, what can I get you? And I was like, <laughs> I will pleasant. just, I literally was like, I will just have a side salad. All right, okay, that's ridiculous no. that he orders just a side <laughs> salad. salad. And then I put the menu back in the thing, and that was it. Now, she didn't really laugh, but that's okay. It's a funny joke. Yes. The note we got back from the network was... He ordered a, he side. Ordered a side salad, and she never brought it to him. She only brought him the barbecue. <laughs> I was like... Uh, but it I was, was like, a okay, joke. we can't do this show. So we were sad that they didn't want to go forward they aired the pilot it aired it aired between Travel like channel employed burt kreischer right who like, i love who's a madman he's like, a mad so man. i'm like wait maybe you guys would be open to this but they aired us between like two like two their marathons version, like pimp my rv or yeah, whatever like their rv showing. makeover and i'm like this is not gonna <laughs> that fit audience is gonna watch so whatever so we tried to do it there it didn't work out but audible came to us and said i think we can make a really cool audio yeah. documentary oh, of nice. this. and so what we learned from doing it four or five times for uh and the pilot for Howl and the pilot was you know the comedy kind of comes in like one of three or four ways you should sort of do it one is you comment on iconic places within a town or roberts university if we go to the arch you know there are some like iconic in raleigh there was a thing we never this never made it in the pilot but there was a place that everyone's like okay you got to go to this place it was this what was it it was like a, a giant acorn no oh. no no there was like a oh the, the the uh there was a, it's a restaurant. We're out in front of the restaurant. It's they, like a barn. It's a huge barn, but it's a steak restaurant. And it is like nice. People take, you go there for your end of the year company Christmas party. Oh, yeah. You go there oh, for your okay. engagement where you're getting you get, engaged. Getting engaged. You're your grandmother's 80th birthday. So like formal dinnerware, but in a barn. And then outside in a gazebo, there's a little thing that you can. It's like a boot that rotates, rotates around that you can like crank it and kick someone in the ass. It's an ass kicking <laughs> machine. An ass kicking machine. We were at like, your formal dinner. At so, your formal dinner. So right. our thing that we thought was hilarious was like, I just want to say, you know, we're honoring grandma today. She beat alcoholism. She, she held an, this family together. She, when nobody she made else, it through an abusive marriage, which is just amazing that here she, she is, is standing today, here today. 85 years old. So before we say happy birthday to grandma, grandma, go bend over and take your medicine. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get your ass kicked. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> but that little thing was a thing that in that town is this iconic place. So it's either that, then there's some stuff about the food, and then it's whatever they're dealing with culturally in that moment. Yeah. Right. Right. And you, we try and attack those issues as much as we can. I mean, we were in Bloomington, Indiana, which is a very blue dot in a very red state. Indeed. And everybody there seemed to be like they have like people, you know, for women's issues, knit sweaters to put around the trees. OK, that's in Bloomington. <laughs> We're like, How do people get to Bloomington? Right. This is a fascinating thing. I'm like, I bet people around. don't move to Bloomington. I bet they're just somewhere else in the state of Indiana and they have like an independent thought. And, and then boom, they're, they're in transformed into Bloomington. Boom. Like someone in Terra, <laughs> a woman in Terre Haute is like, I'm thinking of cutting my hair short. Boom, boom you're in Bloomington. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking about not, not eating meat anymore. Boom, boom you're, you're in Bloomington. 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 Indianapolis. Should we drive a more fuel efficient car? <laughs> Boom, you're, you're in You just wake up and you're there. It's like you're sucked in and shit. It's like being John Malkovich. Like they drop you're, you you're in just there. You're there you're immediately. There. And that is so funny because we started that idea. Well, that's an idea about what the town is kind of wrestling with. That they are this sort of haven for everything. They support gay rights. They, right. You know what I mean? No, and that's, a, and that's the funny thing. Like I love this idea, this premise, because one thing I love about St. Louis comedians is that the things that make often their content, their material, or some of the things you may criticize the city about. And I, I love that you guys can bring that in your comedy. What in particular about St. Louis or growing up here in St. Louis that a random stranger would be able to pick out when they see you guys on stage. Well, also that's the uh, that's the other trick. So you want to get stuff that's universal that right. you can explain, and then truthfully, like trying to explain what an emo's pizza is right. to somebody, <laughs> right. you, you know, fall flat places, really quick. It's right? just <laughs> like flat. it's <laughs> so flat. I'm like, you're like, am I eating the box? I don't understand <laughs> what, is, what is happening here. Right. And by the way, you got to understand. No, just give me one piece. I'll just take that weird corner piece. <laughs> and that's like, a pigeon that would be on it. A pigeon would be upset if you were like, here, yes. here's your piece. It, it's, it's barely a triangle. I, I can't even say it's like I'm a like, straight line. I love that a, chef on the box should be ashamed. They should one. be ashamed. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I love a pizza that you can slide under the door of a locked door during a hostage crisis. <laughs> Write a message on yeah, it. Yeah, right. Right. Boom, there and there. Here's what you so, got. I mean, so again, 
people might not know what it is, but if you do a good job of explaining what that is, right. you can dig into it even more. And what we found is we try some of this material we do in other cities and you can make it relatable. I remember doing stuff about San Francisco in this whole special about how expensive it is to live there. And you can relate it by saying like, here's what I love about St. Louis. You can do the San Francisco stuff here. Here's what I love about St. Louis. It's affordable. Like we're staying at our mom's house. If you were to take our mom's house in Creve Corps and drop it in the... <laughs> Castro in, in, uh, okay. Like that would be a $4 million dollar house. $4 million dollar house. <laughs> like nobody could afford to live in here. It's affordable. You can actually, people can live a life here yeah. and that's nice, but pe- you got to understand that like people in San Francisco can't. So like, <laughs> we're like, you can't even be gay anymore in San Francisco. <laughs> They've priced been out. priced out. The gays have been priced out. There used to be a, a time in this country. If you came from like some city, whatever, wherever you were in the country, you're like, I'm gay. Go, go to, to San, San Francisco. Francisco. <laughs> Just live your life go and be happy. Do your thing. Do yeah. your thing. I mean, enjoy it. But now you can't even do that. Now it's like you're better off staying in the closet in Carbondale. Correct. Rather than living in a closet right. in the castle. Because you can afford dinner. Right. Exactly. You can afford dinner and right. you can afford to hang out a little bit. I mean, that's what we were learning. So I think, you know, that in that way, what we've learned how to do is take this material that we've sort of developed very specifically for San Francisco and everyone who is in San Francisco as we're doing that material, they're like, yes, yes, you do have to make $120,000 to be homeless in the tenderloin a year <laughs> we yes we thank you for it. saying that but then you kind of put it in the context of a tulsa or a st louis sure. or a kansas right. city other places we performed and they're like in one moment they for a second they're like oh thank god i live here and not there right yeah, you, yeah. you kind of get the laugh and then you get them appreciating where they are it, it's weird to i don't know if it's certainly not where you grew up but the toughness of st louis yeah. but it, it's weird because there is that but it's also anytime you travel to a coast the Midwesterners tend to congregate together. He's like, yeah. oh, you will speak to me, or oh, you don't <laughs> suck. Right. You have a soul. Oh, hey, yes. you're polite. Or yeah. you, you actually are grounded in right. some yeah. sort of way. So yes. to insult a city you're in in a playful way, like that's inherently, that's how you grew up. It's right. roasting. I mean, we we do, right. like in, in L.A., we oftentimes, uh, we do about once a month, we'll judge the roast battle, which yeah. I think is one of the nice. greatest yeah. new shows. Most revolutionary new shows. The rel, rel battle uh, and... Um, Brian Moses. Brian Moses, yeah. Was, is that the same one? Yeah, the Did one that was on Comedy Central. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and really, Jeff Ross was a big, right, a big right. inst- a part of it, instigator, and he, and he was like an inspiration. I mean, it, it was. Yeah, you guys were at, at, uh, in Toronto. You were, yeah, we were in the in crowd. In the or crowd, right, right behind Montreal. Behind yeah, Montreal. Yeah, Montreal. Okay, same Festival. thing. Right. But yeah, but we were <laughs> part of the show. Whatever. And sure. so we've been a part of the show, and, and we follow that. There is a, you know, when Jeff Ross. There's a difference. When Jeff Ross roasts someone, there is heart in what he's doing. Even if he's being mean, even if he's cutting to your very core, even if he's sizing you up. And There and is love. Like yeah. He, he mm. does it in a way, which is why he's so brilliant. He right. does it in a way where, where people want to get roasted by him. That's the same kind of love that you have to put into roasting a city. Essentially, we're saying to your city that, and to you, if you have civic pride at all, which St. Louisans have a lot of civic Indeed. pride, we know. We we want you to be laughing at yourself. Laugh at your blind you spots. Have to. Yeah. You have to. We're not going to walk in here and just start picking off the scab of Ferguson. That's not what we're here <laughs> well, to do. And mi- minute 43. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> once we have them. No, but I mean, we're not going to do that. And we have our strong feelings about it. But, you know, I think our attitude is let's find something that is an idiosyncrasy that you guys all have. Let's sort of pull it up into the surface and make fun of it. So Audible and then, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you all are on Facebook. Feral audio, feral audio feral for our audio. podcast. Yes. So we have okay. two podcasts. You were, yeah. So you, it was, we were at Earwolf, and Earwolf. now we've taken them both moved to over. Feral. Okay. Maybe I, I can't remember an interview I heard. You were just discussing some of the business behind that, and that's interesting too. We've been lucky to do some stuff with Adam Carolla, so we've been awesome. we've been able to see his business working yeah, and his how that goes. Amazing. Uh, Greg Great. Fitzsimmons has been on. He does the his best. thing. You have you have these different platforms. Sure. You guys are now taking this too. You're like eh, TV, whatever. We're already out touring, so let's create this eternal loop so you're marketing your own shows people are going to go back to do that people are going to enjoy these things come out see you next time whatever else you're doing but i guess the business of that is it i don't even know the exact question to ask is it strange i know where you're going you know what this is this is show business this This is is what you're doing you're literally doing a project like what you're talking about you have a producer this is stuff 
You could be doing other things to promote your comedy shows, but this is a, a I mean, project the truth of own. the matter is this show that we're doing, the audio, the Audible documentary, yeah. like if we want to do it, like it could be a visual video documentary on Vice or Easily. MSNBC or, I mean, you name it. It could be, or CNN or anywhere. If you're like trying, if you put the spin on CNN, could be like, this is what our country looks like from a funny perspective. Or, hey, this is, if Vice could, NBC, this is all the social issues in every town. So we could be dealing, but, but to us, we're like, we want to do this from a comedy perspective. So we're going to do yeah. this project and that's just what we do. But you're right. It's interesting because th there's still, you can't replace like Kumail, the Nanji the Kumail Nanjiani doing the big sick. Okay. Right. So like you can't <clears throat> replace how his star has ascended from writing this movie that was very difficult for him to write. It took four years for him to write. He and Emily, they sat down and wrote it and they finally got through it. Yes. It helped that he was on Silicon Valley and, yes. and, and well-known in Portlandia and the other things he's done and the movies like fist fight and all those other things we were part of, but and Judd Apatow put his golden finger, finger down right. and that said, helps. I would right. like to do We're this. Making this. By the way, same with Pete Holmes in that Judd Apatow said, I want to, Judd Apatow loves up. He was like, I want to make, Crash. I want to make crashing. And yeah. so then suddenly it, how many comics now have credits because of, if you watch crashing, I'm like, I've literally, we've interviewed 90% of the people on right. there. It's and fantastic. they're great. And so to me, it's sort of like, yes, nothing beats that in right. terms of walking, then going sure. around and touring around it. However, there's a new model. There's a new model. So, Friends of ours like Dave Anthony, who I think is an unbelievable comic, and Gareth Reynolds, who do The Dollop. Yeah. The Dollop is just an incredible, incredible show. Podcast. I highly recommend podcast. I highly recommend your fans check that show out. Because it's like we do Dumb People Town, and Dumb yep. People Town has gotten big in a really good way. When you said you're doing that, too, I, I found it interesting, too, because I remember you kind of announced that, and then you've also spun off into another one as well. Jeep. View from the Cheap Seats. So yeah, we took, is, we yeah, took Scarborough Country yeah. and made it View from the Cheap Seats. Right. right. And so Dumb People Town has really gotten big, but it's about dumb stories that are happening today right. and crazy stories that are happening yeah. today. People who, you know, we say this in our act that like probably right now in Tallahassee, Florida, there's a naked guy with a machete taking a shit in a pool that isn't his. Yeah. That is how dumb pool. I can just, Above I'm telling you, pool. I don't have the facts, but I'm How do you know my Uncle Steve? <laughs> He's there and he's doing it. <laughs> Steve, get out of the pool. Steve. Knock it off, get Steve. Of Put Jesus. some pants on, Steve. <laughs> uh, but I mean, like that to me, should be on the Florida state flag because it, it happens so often. <laughs> and, right. that's, and that's where we've gotten in it. That's, right. that's on us, by the way. That's yeah. on this us. This is not your people. Oh, I know. But we've gotten to that place right. where we are that dumb. And so that's today. Now, the dollop takes a look at historical stories, like people from history and stories events. that were just events and stories and people in history, and they break it down in a great way. Dave Anthony is one of our favorite comics. Yeah. Now, four years and three years ago, I guess, or like two years ago, even since the dollop's gotten big, Dave Anthony, if he was headlining at the Improv in Hollywood, would they'd probably have to pull up the curtain. He wouldn't sell it out because he right. just isn't a name. Now the dollop just got done touring in Australia, and they sold out thousand wow. to two thousand seat venues in Australia. Unbelievable! Why is it, Australia such a gold mine well, for because comics? Because they support podcasts and they yeah. support True. And these guys. For they consume some, American culture. They really. do, yeah. and these guys translate so well. Cause Struck a chord, and so. That's one person. Karen Kilgariff, another person who does my favorite murder mm -hmm. with Georgia Hardstar. Mm -hmm. Karen <laughs> was always one of our favorite comics ever. She She's was, doing like, I don't know, the, I just saw some random person post up a photo, like a selfie. That she does live tours now yeah, too, right? They I mean, do, that's the they model. They do yeah. My Favorite Murder live. They would probably sell out the Fox. I'm yeah. not kidding you. No, I believe yeah, yeah. Fox. Like two, 3,000 people per city. And they're doing it based on... A podcast. So that so to that end, they're making a lot of money. We know this fact. They're making a ton of money because their downloads are huge. And they go around to the cities and get for being purely themselves. This is what I love about the Dave Anthony and Karen Kilgariff aspect of it is both those people were two of our favorite, most funniest people. And I would say to myself, how are they going to do this? Like Hollywood would say to Karen Kilgariff, you're not, you're not pretty enough or right. whatever they would make some stupid comment to say like you're Which, not by the way she's beautiful she's beautiful but you're not but hollywood would be like you're not or like our us anyone's over 40 in hollywood they're like who are you anyway? yeah what, what and are Dave you anthony you haven't made it yet we already know who you are but so these guys went out and were purely themselves and now they can go out and do whatever they want and they can tour around these things and do and the whole world is seeing how funny they are, right. how talented they and are. And I think that does oh. open the door. Now, I don't think every podcast can get there and I don't no. think every, with everything, it, 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 there's not, 
there but people are reinvent themselves. So no one thought you guys know Mark Maron probably yeah, personally. Yeah, yeah. No one was clamoring to see Mark Maron shows. Like I bet if he did the Funny Bone, he would. He was done, always or, he back was, in the day. You yeah, know, he was always no, he was, a brilliant. I'm not comedian, yeah, yeah. But he brilliant. always did really great in New York. But if he went out on the road, he probably wasn't filling filling comedy yeah. clubs, blaming and other his, people. And he was the first one to say it. <laughs> He'd be in the back of the room going, "Why is that guy funnier? No, or why is that guy getting bigger right. crowds?" But he was the kind of person who, like, was 45, 46, he did a radio show on Air America, right. which was great. Mm -hmm. And he, I listened to it. I loved it. And then Air America went away, and he was facing his own career mortality. He said, what do I do? Started recording a show out of his garage, and he's one of the best interviewers in the business. Can literally do anything he wants now. now he's an actor now. He he's great. Right he's up away. for a SAG award. Yeah. For a SAG award. For Glow. And he's amazing in Glow. And we did Marin. We did an episode of Marin. show was so fun to work on. It was a great set. We had a great time oh with my Mark. God. We were, so we're sitting at lunch. I mean, and we just come in ready and prepared. And Mark's got so much to remember. It's his show. Yeah, so on IFC. Marin, yeah, yeah, On IFC, Marin mm -hmm. on IFC. And what's crazy is who's like kind of supervising this group of episodes, but uh, Jerry, Stahl. Jerry Stahl, who the whole Ben, remember Ben Stiller did that movie about oh, yeah. Jerry Stahl, oh, yes. the guy who created Alf, <laughs> and he's doing like heroin in his car with the baby right next to him. So the right. actual guy right. that did right. that. Yeah. So every time, and he's like, and we had never met him, but of course we were fans of him, and he's like a, an amazing writer and super dark. He's there at the lunch table while he's like, okay, you guys want to run the scene with Mark? And we were really ready because we were like okay the yeah. run this next scene that we're about to shoot and we run it and mark's just talking to us and we're just kind of riffing back and forth but we're on top of it off book they're helping mark in the moments because he's got so much to remember and we just have this thing that we want to do and jerry stall was like man that was so fun just what we did right here that was so fun and to hear that from that guy right. in that moment gave us confidence i was just like i can't believe you did heroin in front of a baby <laughs> <laughs> That's so fantastic. let's I mean, let's take your judgment. With a grain <laughs> yeah. of salt. Salt. No, but it was really cool, and what it and it reminded us, like, yeah, like look what Mark did. He 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 reinvented his. He didn't really even reinvent. He just he sort just of got re his message out to the more people. Yeah, he, he found a package yeah. himself and put it out there and is earning the respect he deserves. And yeah. even even that TV show is a good example too. Four seasons. Four, yeah, seasons. four seasons. Four, four. If if in twenty years ago, if the Mark Maron of that time yep. gets a TV show, he's clinging to that thing for dear life. Right. He's begging them to take it ten seasons. Yeah. No, he goes and he jumps into a Netflix thing. Yeah. He did his tour. Good. Like I'm sure he sells out all his theaters. He would sell theaters. He would do the patch. So I mean, it's 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 a wonderful thing. And so as we are like doing the things that we're doing, you have to just say. All right, I think we're on to something here. Like, and, and you know it, you feel it. Like yeah. when we do Dumb People Town, and you look down and you're like, "Wow, okay, this episode is actually, you know, Dan Harmon was on last week. Okay, this episode is. I'm looking at the numbers because you can. I'm sure you guys obsess over the numbers, but yeah. like, you check it and refresh it, and and it like it, it's, it's going off. taking off, and you're like, okay, th maybe we're hitting something with with people here, and I think the whole nation is kind of feeling like we're getting too dumb. And the, it, you look at Alabama and the vote in Alabama and people were like, we can't be dumb anymore. There's this like, <laughs> right. we got to dig our heels in against the stupidity. Right? right. Yes. And so we, I feel like in tapping into that and that's kind of what we do with our comedy is break down the ridiculous. I mean, we do it with finding oh, the funny and, right. and in that way, we do it in a way that only twins can do. And our co-host, Dan Van Kirk, who's with us right. this weekend while we're featuring, here, right? he's featuring, featuring yeah. us. He's such, a great kind of balance to us right because we're just like we b b b b you have a unique thing i mean it's not normal you're a two-man act yeah. you're li your brother you grew up together all these Twins, things yeah. and, i mean even just the business side of that I, f I would find to be interesting like you're still bringing features with you you're doing that I there's know. two of you I you know, know a lot of, i mean you're and it's not that's like you get paid we double say. we well, always that's say that's that's our, the best part about being a comedy team is we get to share the money splitting the money <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible remember that travis uh, yeah. of course yeah. but uh you know but and and again you bring dan in a third co-host yeah. and right. suddenly as things grow you start to you know he's got to split it three ways, and that's a that's a whole day. We're like, meanwhile, we're like longing for the days where we're only splitting it twice. <laughs> right, but, but yeah. we understand what an awesome dynamic the show shifts into with the three of us because Dan comes from a totally different place right. as from us. Like, do you look at Dan's makeup? He's from Rochelle, Rochelle, Illinois. Illinois. He's a Cubs fan. We'll, we'll excuse him. Sorry, for that. Yeah. So he's from Rochelle, Illinois. 
He comes from a working class family. He's not Jewish. We're, we're Jewish. His, in his life, his dad split when he was split when he was like four years old. So he didn't have a, a father and yeah. growing up, which, you know, as fathers ourselves to our kids, we are acutely aware of the things you have to do to keep your kids, to just keep them good people, to right. try and make them good people. To work. work, and then it can still screw up. Of course. of course it can still screw up, but yeah. you got to do, you got to put in so much work. So when, so we are very, so we feel like almost like comedy dads to, yeah. to Dan in a certain way. Because we, we watch Dan, I mean, he's been doing stand-up stand -up only for a couple of years, and he is like super far along. If you come out and see him this this week at, weekend at, at Helium, at Helium yeah. you will see a guy who you would be like, I bet he's been doing stand-up for 10 years. That's how, I mean, we, we can just know because- He's we've seen fast forwarded so far, but it's because he's he really understands how to break things down and understands how to how to make comedy out of something right. and a story. You know, he loses his computer at, at leaves his bag at, at Midway Airport and his mm. story of being back at home with his uncle and trying to go back and get the bag and talk to the Chicago Police Department. It's like a twelve minute it. story. It's a twelve minute story. <laughs> like he's got, he's doing a twenty minute feature set and he's got like a twelve, 12 minute, minute story, story and an eight minute story. And he just, he, and that's the perfect setup for us too because what he's saying subtly. I mean, we, this is a really cool thing about comedy is that you got to know who who's right for you to open, right? To feature for you. Oh because my gosh, some people so you think, important. Oh my gosh, it's really, so important. It, you see it and you're like, ooh, so they, you want to hear a crazy? This. Yeah, yeah, but you want to hear a crazy story because sometimes you don't even know or get it right. So when we were up in Portland years ago, Ron Funches, yeah. Open. He like was, was the, the MC. Wow. So he was the MC, and then the feature guy. Can't remember. Whatever. Can't even remember his name. Nice guy, but just was doing material that was super dirty. And we're like, that doesn't help us that much. Mm. So we actually went to the club, and we're like, we loved what Ron was doing. We're like, is there any way we can switch around? I hate doing this, but it's putting yeah. us in such a hole. We don't want to change the pay structure. Don't pay the pay structure, but can you just switch around the order? Yeah. I don't even care about time. Creatively, this is bothering us. This, yeah. Well, it's not. It's it's doing us a disservice because for the first 10 or 12 minutes of our set, we were kind of digging out of a hole. I see. And if right. we're to say anything shocking, if it's not as shocking as the the bag of dicks yeah. that he <laughs> bit that he did at the end of the thing, right. we're not going to get there, and we're not uh, the impact won't be there. So we switched around, and then like a few years, Ron started to do a little bit better. It wasn't at the level that he was. And we were like, let's bring Ron to San Francisco with us. Let's bring him to San Francisco. He was right at the edge where he had the most killer half hour. It was yeah. like the best of the best. And it's just joke, 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 joke. He's telling longer stories now, Ron. But mm -hmm. like before it was just like joke, 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 crush, hammers it, crush, crush. crush. And we had just done an hour and we were into a new set of material that we weren't 100% comfortable with. And we're trying to like work through it. He went up there and just, we couldn't follow him. Like, I mean, he's amazing. We but yeah. were like, his comedy is so similar <laughs> to ours. And this one. We, it just wasn't the right fit. So even a guy yeah. that you love, that you feel like fits you really well, maybe isn't the right setup. So when we bring Dan, it's like a perfect setup for us because he's really funny, but funny in a way that stretches the audience, makes them listen to a long story, get into a bit, and then... Focus. You know. Focus. Nate Fridson's another great comedian out of New York who we who will bring with us to places. But we Just always great. we're like edgy but not dirty, longer bits that take an audience that requires an audience to right. focus. It's such an so art form to this. Like it's so great to hear you guys break this down because people don't always think that think of it like that too. But a lot goes into that. And yes, you're up telling jokes, but like this is your livelihood too. And you could make a huge impact on these crowds if you architect it the correct way our, our totally. host this week is amazing sarah um i don't know local her, yeah yes. local sarah sarah pearl oh sarah, sarah pearl sarah pearl. Sarah, pearl. sarah pearl yeah she's done a couple of our shows phenomenal she's perfect a, yes why because she a Art. woman number one a woman so she's speaking to and again i don't think like we're not like the dutiest dudes who <laughs> even though we know what to talk about sports we don't come at you with this kind of aggro energy so you start with a woman it just completely gets everybody engaged. Mm -hmm. She'll catch possible. people off guard. Yeah, too yeah, she's, she's, yeah. she's edgy. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. alternative in her lifestyle and in other things that she brings out and talks about sure. on stage. She pushes the crowd politically a little bit into the right space for us. And then, you know, Dan comes on and does what he does. It's like the perfect You look, look at it, and we're very happy with kind of the lineup of this week's show. That's shows. fantastic. Like, I'm, I'm going to sort of fanboy out a little bit. I, I, what I love about what you guys do, the, the projects that you pick, like they're so natural. They're, they're just like, oh, that makes sense for them to be in that project. And most recently, uh, of course, you guys did Better Call Saul, oh which God. I think 
as far as what I want out of a TV show, yeah. as far as like yeah. the drama and the the humor and the wit, like it has everything. I think it's, if it's going, to, it's a genius in my mind. I mean, I love that you're giving us credit for picking to do that show. We were like, <laughs> right, we yeah. basically, well, you guys were so, was, but you guys were so natural. And I, oh, I thought when, you. I, when you guys yeah. did that, those episodes, I was just like, that makes sense, and it was so Thank perfect. You. So the, I will tell you guys about the audition because that was super cool, and I feel like we benefited from both of us going in. So in that audition, it was for two guys who own a record store they have to have a relationship with not each record other. store music store. music store i'm sorry right. they don't they didn't have to necessarily be brothers they actually didn't even say that they were brothers right. but they said two guys two who guys a, who have a long relationship, relationship with each they other own a, they own a music <laughs> store so we knew that they were bringing all these really funny people great people and just people who fit the i mean uh, john innes who used to be on uh mr show dave, yes. gruber, <laughs> dave gruber allen who was on the naked trucker with uh yeah. with dave Kegner. Dave Kegner, yeah. like just people that we love and i'm like gruber you look like a music store guy we right. saw him in the audition i'm like they should give it to you but the benefit we had was that those people were reading just one of the two roles. And we knew they had to cast it that night for someone who's going to fly to Albuquerque the next day to go. Yeah. And we were like, okay, let's go in there. Kind of like the Marin table, like lunch mm -hmm. table, reading this be thing. Be ready. So be prepared. Show them exactly what it would look like. Either they'll love it or they won't. Show them exactly what it will look like so that the casting person plays Odenkirk in the scene right. behind the camera and we will do everything else. So it really you get the rhythm of the scene, you really feel it so that the producers, you know, your Peter your uh uh who Peter Gould, Peter Gould, and uh, Tom Schnoz, who was directing it, and the writer, they and Bob get an idea of this is what it's going to be, and so we did that, and I felt like we benefited from that because they had to make a quick decision. That's and huge. The, and the casting person was amazing. Of all the auditions we've ever been on, the auditioning is it's it's almost like taking the LSATs and trying to see if you're going to be a good lawyer. Those are two opposite good things. Good God, it's a that's stupid a, test, and it's the opposite. It doesn't. <laughs> Right. An audition, when you go into audition for something, you get one crack on it. They turn the cameras on. Maybe there's a bunch of producers sitting over there. And you're reading with a person who's not an actor. It's a casting mm -hmm. director. And sometimes, you know, they don't put the inflection in it that you're imagining. But, like, you got to be conscious of the camera. You got to be talking to this person. You get one shot at it. One. And then you're done. If you get on a set, you screw up a line. They're like, let's go back to one. Their goal is to make it look good. So you lose yeah. that energy of like, I got to nail this right. on one take. It's not a live show. You just every, if you're on a TV or movie set, you get lots of chances. So in this audition with this woman, she's like, we're going to do this until we are, until we're in love with it. All right. So here's what I want you to change. I love this. I love this, but work on this. Let's pull this back a little bit. And let's try it again. Did it again. She's like, you're closer, but we're not there yet. Here's what we're going to do. Suddenly the audition became like working on, on a the set. set. Right. Wow. And we got more comfortable. And we were both there, and she's like, "I'm loving this. This is where we're at. This what is an advantage you two amazing. have, too. I mean, that was that was a lucky advantage. And some of the work we've gotten has been roles for one person that we'll go really? in and say, we'll say, okay, like it's always sunny. We did it's always sunny. Yeah. We did the the DJs. They had a role for a, one guy who was the DJ for their <laughs> dance competition, and we were like, okay, <laughs> we were supposed to go in and read against each other. And I'm like, I don't want to read against him for this thing. We're, and right. we're like, we love this show so much. I would hate for this to be the audition where that, we both <laughs> cancel each other out. Or right. we so we're like, I wonder if as we were rep, as we were preparing it with each other, helping each other prepare, we just started improvising and riffing as if like, what if it was like a morning zoo? What if it was like this weird <laughs> cute crew, like these two weird guys? And then we started doing it and, it and we fit within the lines. We didn't change the scene that much. We just kind of bounced Which to each great. other. And then right. once we got the job and got on the set, we started to improvise that one of us was going through like a terrible divorce, <laughs> but wouldn't drop the DJ voice. So, and they were loving it. So like we were just trying to come up with new ways to be like, I can't tell you the last time I didn't shower with motel soap. Kim <laughs> Crew. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like to walk into the closet and just smell her dresses. <laughs> but what's the general response then when you guys make that decision? What, 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 what? So it goes one or two ways. Okay. Either they love it and they're like, okay, I can't see it any other way. Okay. So you always have that opportunity to get them in a way where – the, the text comes alive in a way. Right. You have to understand people, producers and showrunners are watching the same lines read the same way or right. a very similar just slight variation. And their main goal 
The main goal to book a job is that you want to bring the scene to life so they can imagine seeing it as it as it will live in the scene. Or and bring funny things to it. Bring funny things to it they didn't expect or whatever it is, you, you fulfill what they're hoping they'll see out of the scene. So they'll either love it or they'll be like, we don't have the budget to pay two people or, <laughs> or, or, or yeah, that's well, not what we that's intended. That's not what we intended. This. Like in my brain, I have it as an African-American woman. Why are these two people coming in? Right. So, I mean, it's like they, you sometimes come against people who are stubborn and they said, this is what they want. And, you know, more power to them. They created it, right. whoever yeah. it is. But we do like to go in. And when, once you go in and if you do a good job or we're on or we feel like we got a good beat on this, then I feel like we're always like, okay, we, we have a puncher's chance because they might like it. This person might like it. I remember we, we auditioned for the role that Jay Moore got in Burt Wonderstone. And it was <laughs> old magician who was like a comedy guy. And, Mo and Moore is someone we know and a friendly guy with us. And he's, you know, he's done our podcast. He's nuts. But I remember we, Doug Lyman, it was Doug Lyman. It was the guy who did Swingers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Wasn't that who it was? I think so. Yeah, I think so. And so we were, we had gone to <laughs> him. Burt Wonderstone got tossed around for like five years. So, yeah, years yeah like magic crazy. thing. And and so we had been working on it, working on it. We go, we read for him. He loves it. Producers, they're into it. We're like, okay, we are going to get this role in a movie with Steve Carell and Jim Carrey. I mean, we are going to get this. I, I was like, I can't believe we're going to get this. Everything we we're doing felt right. It felt good. We took the role for one person, divided as like an old comedy team who kind of got on each other a little a bit. A, a, magi a, a magic, a magic team, yeah, like, right. magic and comedy team. <laughs> And uh, we get up to the studio who's like deciding on it. And the, the one person at the studio was like, nah, nah I don't like it. <laughs> and there it is. And you're gone. Like, yeah. Dead. And then you're gone. This whole thing you Little built up behind just the curtain. Gets, wow. smashed, <laughs> yeah. gets smashed down the thing. So there are, sometimes so there, are as many, there are as many success stories, you know, as there are failure stories sure. that go with it. But like what they always say, and this is true, you guys know this when you're doing stand up too. You got to take a big swing. What, it, you, you may swing and miss, but it, the worst possible thing you could do is take a half step towards something, not fully commit to it. And it's the same with auditioning and acting and stand All that stuff. Yep. Do you guys recall that moment? Like, I would imagine you've taken a big swing early in your career and maybe you come up swift. Still. Like, what was your reaction? How did you guys perhaps lean on each other to build up that confidence against God? I was imagine the first time out in the batter's box, you don't hit a home run. When you say I mean, lean on each other, you mean turn on each other. <laughs> just viciously right, right. snipe right. each other and blame each sure, other. We, uh, to a, a lesser degree, too, just to add to that, we've known each other for, I don't know, 12 years, something yeah. like that, mm, yeah. from college. And then, so we have a chemistry, too. That totally. You have fun, you get up on stage or whatever. Yeah, yeah. There is that look, you're like, are we, like, serious right now? Or, yeah. like, is this what we're... Is this <laughs> what, and then, are you going to bring up that one thing? Yes. With the what? Yeah. And, and we'll do, there'll be moments where we'll be reticent. We'll be like, I don't know if we should take that swing. But, but that, like as you just mentioned, like you have to. And I'm wondering, there had to have been a moment oh, where you guys yeah. swung. And totally. I mean, we've done that. Get good at lying. I too. just remember, I remember there was a great pilot that we auditioned for that I, it was so funny. Chris Han was it, uh, not Chris Han Ryan Hansen. Ryan Hansen, who was on Party Down, the blonde haired mm -hmm. dude, good looking guy. There was a really funny pilot called El Jefe where he turned 30. And his dad grew up in like Beverly Hills and he was living at home. He was kind of a screw up. And his dad was marrying someone who was two years older than remarrying his second wife was two years older than him and went to high school with him. So oh. he knew the girl and she was like, I don't want this guy around. Like your son can't be in this house. And so they kick him out of the house. He's got to, they were basically the father was there and he had to leave. So <laughs> he goes to live with his nanny. Mexican nanny and their family because she was the one who took care of him as a kid. <laughs> Great and he, story. And, and so he goes funny. and he gets involved in their life and he's, he goes, to the brother's landscaping business and he's the most positive kind of upbeat sweet person and he falls in love with the sure. daughter and he i mean it's like a really funny and interesting story and it's so kind of interesting and sweet and we there was a role for twins who played like the his best friends who 
were kind of shitty and they were yeah. but they were really funny with each other and we were like oh my god we're gonna we're gonna get this again another one we're like we're gonna get this and we, I, we knew the guy who was the executive at sony who was a friend of ours who's oh, in wow. both of our weddings loves us and we're like we're gonna get this role we go in and audition for it have a good audition feel really good and what we didn't realize is that the producers of the show wanted to shoot one person and do it like a kind of like was, the deuce do a split screen and like show that technology that they could you do one actor twice so we didn't get it so we didn't get it and army that, hammer stole your job yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> technology did some other guy but like we and we just were like man we can't compete with technology we, here we are taking the biggest swing that we can in something that felt really good and i just remember after that we were very down very depressed Interesting. like man i don't know if we should what are we doing we're but, like, uh, but i think you were talking about on stage like or even to, then that too like or I'm, just any moment in your career where yeah i mean i think there have been times where we've really pushed to try and do some material or try and do a bit either one of us said i think there's something in this we should right. definitely try it and it's just fallen flat and and our attitude is at this point like hopefully we've done enough stuff that people can say they're quite the done, resume we've done some things so right. i'm not you know we've had stand-up specials and netflix special we we feel good about what we've done so now if we try it's we're all in the name of growth and coming up with something new and we're gonna miss sometimes some of it's, gonna, it's not all gonna some hit. not gonna hit so we can't we we are good at not beating ourselves up as much as maybe at the beginning when right. we were trying to be funny. When you would like go away right. and be like, what is wrong? <laughs> what are with we us? doing? Maybe we can't do it. I mean, every comedian to me, if if you're a comedian, and there probably are a few who who haven't had like the adversity that we all have had. Right. If you're a comedian and you don't like after a set of comedy, stare into the abyss that is your future and say, Why did I do this? This was a mistake. I don't have any other skills. I am totally screwed <laughs> if you don't say that to yourself at least once in your life then i don't know i can't relate to you do you I, feel, I, like, do you feel I was, like that radio guy i was like ah oh. like my conscience like, wow. I'm like, I'm yeah. right now but we all God. have said that right. and if you have never said that to yourself i can't relate to you right. there's a moment where you do look at it and you say to yourself that that's how you get better because enterprise hiring back in st louis <laughs> ah, right. that's right that's right I, I could pick you up at your house <laughs> ted drews it really is good guys uh <laughs> No, but that's it. I mean, you, you, there's those, there's that moment where you're like, I've stepped all the way out onto this ledge. I cannot go back, but I don't know if this is going to work out. And out of that always comes something great. Something good will come, but yeah. you have to go to the dark place first. I you can't skip the dark place yeah. moment. You have to go there. You have Cause to then it is so much sweeter. I do think this is this business. And the thing that we do is a series of corners. You're going around a building mm. and we don't know what's around the corner. You hope it's going to be good it could be terrible yeah you just don't know so you're constantly going around a corner that you don't know you can't see around and that's the hardest part about this business it's exciting on some level i think we all live outside of the comfort you know those people who have those jobs were like it's this is what it two is two years i'm gonna be partner and then two years i'm gonna <laughs> do this so two true. years and i'm gonna retire they know they know yeah. the path. and by the way that's awesome that security is amazing and something to be desired but there is a moment, I'm sure, if those people are really real with themselves, if they don't love what they're doing, where they're like, man, maybe I could have done this, or maybe I could have pushed myself a little bit more. You do, and we'll get you guys out of here in just a second again. Sure. Go see them at Helium Comedy Club this weekend. Uh, we're going to hook you up with some barrel beard and tattoo oil. Check that out. Yes, Local product I can't here wait. I got town. a beard that needs that oil. <laughs> right. That, that's psyched. right. We have a comedy show. We got Bobby Jaycox headlining on the 28th. Tickets are on sale now. We are live radio.com. 10 bucks come out. Got some blues music along with that. Sweet, cool. uh, National Bag Radio, myself and Ian Bag. That's the more fun podcast that I, I do. love. But Ian Bag so much. I can't. <laughs> his tell ability you. He's an to work the crowd is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. In my wow. life, it's he's the like fastest. he's just this. He is a machine in so many ways, and I mean, we love him as a person and as a comedian. Very cool. So yeah, guys, check them out. Check out their podcast as well. So back to this real quick. Sure. At your level, and I've seen it too with our conversation we've had with people, and again too, that's the my other podcast partner. Uh, how messed up is it sometimes, or how do you tell someone who's young? I see it with people who come talk to us about radio or something. Like, how do you do this? How do you do this? You can't even begin to describe the amount of letdowns, work, and just getting your face bashed in. Mm -hmm. And we're you know, we're just a few years into this anyway. Mm -hmm. But at the same time. 
I mean, you start putting some miles behind you. It's almost where you're like, good that you're asking, but also like, I can't tell you, and you're just going to have to crush it yourself. I mean, I'll get, I'll help you however I can, but I mean, people come up. How do we? At I'm, your level, you just said it. You're friends with the executive at Sony, and you lose out on a job. Lose a job. Completely. You just had that TV show idea that you had for like, who who's not going to buy into that? Travel I mean, Channel, Channel, Channel like, Come on, Travel Channel, we made between. the pilot. It aired. I was like, it actually got yeah. a decent rating, and then they said, no, we're not going to do it. I mean, to I, me, it's a simple concept too. It's very humorous, no, and you know, you, you have to bet on yourself to always have another idea. You yeah. have to all, then go back and create, kind of like Marin we talked about before. Like he relied on himself as a person who comments on the world and then his ability to relate to people and interview people. I mean, not to get into Hamilton, which I think is one of the greatest creations uh, artistically right. in decades. Certainly, you know, it speaks for itself. I mean, it's success. Yeah, There's a line in there that said, I wrote my way out. Yeah. Like, that's what you have to do. And that's what we would tell comedians or young people. Young people, but, I say, look, if you want to do stand-up comedy, like, do you have 10 years? Okay, unless, that's a really good point. Wow. You got, you got, mm -hmm. and so if you're telling, but, like, but I'm good, I'm doing well, I'm already, and we're like, mm -mm. you well, could be doing great right now, but it will take you and, 10 and years. And the truth of the matter is, and this is a great statement by one of the greatest, if not the greatest running back of all time, Walter Payton, may he rest in peace. He said, when you are good, you tell people. When you are great, they tell you. And the truth of that is that like, if you're really <laughs> great, killing it, if you are really killing it, then the jobs and the opportunities and the other stuff will come. And the jobs and the opportunities and all that stuff come about five years after you think they should come. Mm. So that means you got to keep working through That's and so keep true. going and going because you're like, we deserve this now. And you're like, well, maybe you don't. Or maybe you do, but it's not going to come for another five years. So you right. better keep going and you better keep working hard and you better keep picking yourself back up and keep doing that. And that's how... You know, there is a small, scant few people on this earth who, you know, get a TV show right out of school and then that turns into another TV show and then turns into movies. And that. I'm talking about like three or four people. Right. Like literally, the, yeah. The rest yeah. of us, we, we all aren't Aziz. Aziz did, is a killer comic <laughs> right. who had a, he was, he was the, he was the the comic to watch when he was at NYU, and then he did the MTV show, which was fantastic, and then he did Parks and Recs, which were amazing, which was amazing, and then he did movies, and now he's in the stratosphere. Master of None. Master of None, fantastic. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's done that. Not everyone has that pathway. Right. No. Everybody, no. you think about someone like Zach Galifianakis. We started with him. You know, that was a guy who bounced around, did a bunch. He <laughs> always was a moment the where like he, he did the. I thought he was funny on his VH1 talk show, but that's not what he should have been doing. Right. But he was still funny on it, and yet that show is seen as a failure. We're sitting here going, "That's not a failure. Right. That's that's him getting on and doing." A hundred episodes or eighty episodes of this show that was like a show funny that, and weird funny and awesome. and interesting and maybe not the right thing for him. But Look at then, John Mulaney. John Mulaney is a guy who who yeah. gets a shot at doing a yeah. TV show. They stick Martin Short on the show. It's kind of a mess. It isn't exactly what he they wants. Call, to do. They cursed it. They, they, they called cursed, it the new Seinfeld. They, they, when they did in, that, the that, promo, in the promo, they, they made killed him. the mistake. That show gets canceled. You would think, you know. That's uh, a he's blow, screwed. man. He's done. Then he releases Netflix special and he sells out right. 2,000 seaters five nights in every city. Yeah. Why? Because so Radio City, good. five nights. That's, that's insane. insane. That's because he's great. Because you go watch him do stand up, you're like, yep, that's, that's right. That's yeah. how it should be. But it had to come after the failure, mm. which I'm sure I'm hurt sure him. I'm sure he hurt him in a, in a deep was way. the failure of this TV show that he poured everything into. Yeah. Again, but we, if you have the mindset of, okay, that was a failure, but at least I got it on the air. Yeah. At least I was able to right. make it through this whole thing. And then what's the stuff. next thing? What, what's my next thing? Oh, I'm going to do another Netflix special that's going to catch fire or do this. Or, you know, in our case, you guys do, or do another radio show. We're going to do another episode of this thing. We're going to create a new concept, more stand up. I mean, the crazy thing is that you do when you get into creating the thing that you love doing, other thing, I, I and you're good at it. I do believe that, well, that there's a, people need to be told that too. Like sometimes just because you're doing it i mean yeah exactly. I mean, you're gonna make it you right gotta yeah, be, right, right exactly. sorry good there's a great point though but be the, good at what you're doing that's a great you. point too but if you're doing something that you really love not for it to turn into the opportunity right you're just doing it because you love it we sat down with richard simmons he I, we met him on a plane this is from our last netflix special we tell like a 13 minute story about how he sucked my thumb on a plane it was <laughs> Aside from the fact that he was a bit of a gay sexual predator, a really sweet guy. Sweet guy. Yeah, uh, sure, dynamite sure. guy. Hashtag right. me too. <laughs> Sucked my thumb on a plane. All right. And he was a good dude. But we talked to him, and his story is great because it's relatable to all of us. 
He was, back in the day, he took the little money that he made from being a maitre d' at this, like, restaurant, at this Italian restaurant in, in Beverly, Beverly Hills. Hills. And he's like, back when you could, back when it wasn't so expensive that you couldn't, he bought a little hole in the wall Studio. exercise, like, little space. And he started doing, because he said, I'm going to get fat if I don't do this. I need to start exercising. And he was this like super gregarious, like larger than life personality, even back then, but didn't know how to sort of put it out there. And he started like doing this and he invited some of his friends and then his friends invited, have you heard of this exercise class? You got to go check this thing out. Then all of a sudden they bring a producer from General Hospital, General Hospital comes over and is like somebody who works on the show. And they're like, I'm doing this crazy exercise class with this guy who is a nut. I mean, you got to see this guy. <laughs> now, Richard Simmons wasn't saying, I'm going to do this i'm going to take every last penny i have so, so that i can, can get on general get hospital. on general hospital no he said i need to do the thing that is the most me and he does it and he's great at it and people are like oh man you got to go check this thing out and then the the producer from general hospital gets there and is like this guy is insane he's so magnetic and yeah. so captivating let's put him on the let's show. put him on the show let's let's do a thing where like he's helping one of our characters try and lose weight and he's this thing like it, it's crazy we'll just put him on and this was at a time when there were only three networks and people were watching the show sure and Richard Simmons on our podcast. I mean, I'll never forget it because he was just wavering between like singing Broadway <laughs> and then breaking and crying, down and then crying and breaking down in tears. <laughs> yeah, very it was emotional. like insane. But he starts talking about all the letter fan mail that came in after he had done three episodes. Uh, like they brought a whole box of. He's like, I'll never forget the moment they brought a whole box of fan mail. Starts opening the letters and people are like, people are like, thank you for telling. The, the story, your story about changed losing weight life, and the yeah. change my life. And he's telling us in a, the way we're sitting right now and he starts crying right. because he's literally reopening the first letter that he read in front of us in, in his, his brain. And he's like crying, and gets emotional. But that was the point that like he went back to the, he did the thing that made him the most purest version of him. And then people are like, that's amazing. How do we use that? How do we mm. take that and put that somewhere else? So instead of thinking about how do I, get my show on how do i do this thing how do i what are the that five guy? development minutes of stand-up that i can do that are the most <laughs> way Go that like hell. translate yeah. into the thing and you don't do that you what, kind of have how to can i do the purest version of me in whatever format podcast mm. stand-up short film animated show. animated show whatever you decide to create do the thing that you're most passionate about that's the deepest to you and that's you rolling the I, That's dice. all I've seen are the, the successful, most successful people I've seen just kind of cling to that thing that, that makes them great and then it completely goes out wide. The only thing you could even classify as lucky in that Richard Simmons story is proximity. Yeah. yeah. Like that's it, it, literally it was smart to do it there. Thing. He was smart to leave New Orleans and head out to LA to do it and, and I'm sure there was some savvy in that for him. I give him all the credit in the world and Opening it in Beverly Hills was probably smarter than opening one in Torrance, right. okay? Because you're gonna be <laughs> right. in Beverly Hills, and, right. but it's I think he knew that there were like rich people who were sitting on their ass sure. all day and probably needed to exercise. And maybe he was like, maybe some influential people will come in here. That was not his whole no, thing. Don't was focus like, on that. Yeah. Let me open some a business that I think you know. Again, it's it's just amazing how that stuff kind of works itself out that way, and it's a great lesson as you think about it. Guys, it's been a wonderful conversation. Oh, it's true pleasure. This really, is a thank great you guys time, so much. Man. Go see them. Helium Comedy Club. Listen to the podcast. Indeed. Support the Audible project coming out. That should be out in... Oh, and one other thing that's coming out we should mention if you... If yeah, okay. You may. You may. So we did a... <laughs> tell, a about, tell me anything you want. On so that. This is your time, buddy. I thank mean, you. this is another thing that we did that a friend of ours asked us to be a part of. He was a He directed this. He wanted to do a documentary about, of all things poop i know that sounds weird but he was like it's something and he said would you guys want to be a part of it and we were like no no because so. it's not our brand it's not really what we do he's like okay think about it over the weekend and come back and talk to me and we said okay so we did and we said okay aaron it's our buddy aaron feldman great writer like screenwriter and, and whatnot and director and we said okay we'll do it if we can do a very smart look at like a very honest and right. open discussion of like, why is it something that everybody does, but people don't talk about? Why do we have a hard time talking about it or sharing right. it with people? Like, we hide it. We hide well, it. I don't like to poop in public. What is my problem? We need to get to the root of all this stuff because I bet other people have that too. Or maybe people are just wide open with it and are happy with it. Sure. So we contacted as many of our friends who we thought could move the needle. 
Eric Stone Street, Adam Carolla, Dr. Awesome. Drew, Aisha Tyler, Lauren Weedman, Jonah uh, Ray, Jonah Ray, the Murderers Row, Paul awesome. Sheer, Rob Cordry, talent, some real talent. Brandon, I mean, Brent Small, Steve Agee, and everybody had a very different view of it. And of course, like you got amazing stories like Brad Williams told, like one of the greatest Brad stories. Oh, right. Of course, one he of did. the greatest yeah. stories ever in the there. middle of it. And we were, Jay and I led the interviews, our buddy directed it, but like we're talking to our friends the way we're talking to you guys. And it was just a very open. common, open conversation, honest conversation. And it's really funny. And so we shot this movie for very little money and thought, I don't think anyone's going to see it, but you never know. Pass it around. There was a guy who was at like preferred content that did Jiro Dreams of Sushi and oh, wow. Arrival and all these other great movies. And the guy's like, I don't he, know. He's like, I don't know. I can't walk down the hall to my higher ups and say, <laughs> we're gonna hey, we're going to make a movie. <laughs> a good movie about shit. Right. But he watched the movie and he's watching it. He's like, that was funny, really interesting. I still don't think I can sell it. Sits down and has dinner with his family. And they're like, what, what's going on? And he's like, I saw, I saw this, this documentary today. today. And then the family starts talking about it for 45 minutes, just about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like, okay, all right, maybe I need when? to rethink this. I need to figure this out. He actually won himself over. Wow. Walked down and said, okay, we got to figure this out. So through about another year of this, how these things go, Comedy Dynamics bought it and they're distributing it. And now with like a full marketing push and everything behind it, it's going to open in 10 cities. cities in theaters. Oh, not, I was going to, I was maybe yeah. like Amazon prime. Or well, so that's be VOD that, also and all VOD that. and Amazon prime and all that stuff. February 16th. Okay. It's called poop talk just because I think they want, I mean, I would love to call it talking shit, but like, <laughs> like I think if we do way, that, if we do can. that, then right. it, you lose the kind of, we're like, look, we wanted this to make as much money as possible in the same vein of the aristocrats, only way more universal because it's something that everybody does. Does. Yeah, it is fascinating and funny and I'm looking silly forward and stupid. to it. It's yeah. called Poop Talk, and it's coming out on February 16th. Okay, so all your people can check it out and support local <laughs> nice. folks. And man, that's we'll fantastic! See, man. I'm, gonna, I'm excited about that. That is those, pretty that, cool. That's you guys awesome. and the names you mentioned—that's again, those are the people we love. Man. It'll that's, be really. You guys will totally dig it. I'm looking for. I'll tweet you whenever. Thank you. Please, do that. Hey, please <laughs> let us know. Tweet your story. You might have a great poop story. <laughs> Come on, man. Share it. Share it. Open up. That's right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank Hope you the rest of the trip goes well. We'll see you this weekend. Thank you.